hey guys welcome to my channel once again and welcome to another video in the midwifery basket <laughs> i don't believe how far we've come right in this midwifery husky videos and i apologize because i haven't released the videos as frequently as i used to i've been quite busy in the last couple of weeks uh, but yeah here i am now and in today's video we'll be discussing the bridge beds <laughs> so like always we'll just be going through the marking criteria and at the end of the video i think i have a video recording of myself when i was preparing for mine i'll just put that at the end of the video so you can learn one or two things from that hmm? so without wasting so much time we're just gonna go right into it <laughs> introduce myself hey guys welcome to my channel once again my name is Omo Polaji. so yeah um the first thing here says declares the emergency clearly stating bridge beds and recognizes the need to request for assistance using the emergency buzzer states that calling of a 999 ambulance is indicated if required if it's a case of um, a home bed and it's a bridge bed then yeah for this station it's um mandatory for you to mention that you're going to call 999 okay and the essence of calling 999 is to facilitate the transfer to an obstetric unit this station is very very compulsory do not forget you to mention to that it. the second thing is um gains content oh because i'm a content creator gains content <laughs> gains consent to provide care and verbalizes the need to communicate the emergency situation clearly to the woman so yeah you're letting the woman know that mom amy 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 i can say the buttocks of your babe it's an emergency and it's called rich beds do not panic but i'm gonna call for some help i'm gonna need some help do not panic when people come in mind is the importance to involve the woman in care planning and decision making in particular position for birth and makes evidence-based recommendations to the woman so yeah you're involving the woman in everything that you do you're letting her know why she, you're 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 suggesting a particular position to her what are the benefits what are the risks associated um and um evidence-based recommendations like this thing you're recommending why so if you're saying hands-on you're letting her know why you're doing an hands-on if you're doing hands-off you're letting her know why you're considering an hands-off something like that then the fourth point says recognizes the midwife's role in first line management of emergency bridge ensuring maternal and fetal well-being and that nearby obstetric unit is aware of the emergency so as a midwife sometimes it's going to be home birth and you're at home and then this is a bridge birth. what are you going to do you're by yourself or probably you have someone else what are you going to do so you need to recognize that even though it's an emergency bridge it is on you the onus is on you to ensure maternal and fetal well-being and you're calling for help as soon as possible like such that the obstetric unit is aware that there is an emergency and help is coming to you while you're still trying to keep mother and baby safe at that time demonstrates the principles of facilitating a physiologic birth a physiologic bridge birth safely following evidence-based practice like hands off the bridge unless the assistance is required supporting the woman to push with contractions to facilitate birth so you're telling the mom that she's um pushing with her contractions to facilitate birth and here yeah, you also say you could also say hands off that you're going to be using the hands off technique so that you don't stimulate the baby to stop tactile stimulation that could cause the hyper extension of the limbs and further um makes the, the bridge beds more difficult something like that so in bridge beds the hands off technique is something you want to use in bridge beds then the five pieces articulates the importance of the fetal back being uppermost anterior line with the symphysis pubis when the woman is in semi-recumbent position articulates if the back starts to rotate posteriorly grasp the fetus around the pelvic girdle not soft tissues and rotates without traction to ensure that the back remains anterior so basically this is one of the maneuvers that you'll be using in delivering the bridge bed offset maneuver next one is articulates the need for timely identification of delay delay of more than five minutes from delivery of the buttocks of the head or more than three minutes from the umbilicus to the head delivery of the 
extended legs and new cow or extended hams if progress is not made after the delivery of the umbilicus and there is evidence of poor fetal condition what this basically means is you're gonna state that from delivery of the buttox to delivery of the egg should not be more than five minutes and the delivery of the umbilicus to the delivery of the egg should not be more than three minutes so you want to note when the umbilicus was delivered does it make sense after you've delivered the buttox you want to note the fetal condition at that point you're noting the abgar score like is the baby well what's the tone what's the color you're noting that and of course you're anticipating poor fetal condition in bridge bed so your resuscitator should be ready and the, you've called for help and um, you should expect that the pediatrician should also be available then the next thing says evaluate the need for an episiotomy because it is a bridge birth you should evaluate the need for an episiotomy because you know the head normally the head of the baby tends to overlap when it passes through the birth canal but in the case of the brutox that you should expect that that may not happen so that's one of the reasons that we are evaluating for episiotomy so you also demonstrate the need to remove extended legs how you would deliver the legs like getting to um, find the popliteal fossa and deliver the legs if it was not spontaneously delivered and then you do that for the both legs also the same thing for the arms as well you do that for the arms too and that's the next point demonstrates the ability to remove nuchal arms by performing the love set maneuver articulates the need to perform the maricosmel vet maneuver to deliver the after coming head when indicated due to delay and if there is evidence of poor fetal condition 11 demonstrates the ability to perform the miracles maneuver to deliver the after coming of the head verbalizes the importance of of completing all relevant documentation including the meals after acts professionally throughout the procedure in accordance with the nmc so basically that's what the marking criteria says and that's um, what they expect us to do so those are things that you don't want to miss out um that's pretty much it to be honest it's just getting to know what you're doing part-time and um how to go about the procedure from the beginning to the end so i'll just put a video of when i practiced for mine somewhere here where i did like from the beginning to the end it's an emergency situation so you might not have to do all the id checks and how your system might just tell you to go straight into it and then you just go straight into the emergency and you start saying and doing what you will do in that obstetric emergency situation that checks in for safety perform and hygiene use ppe and then you go to your assessor and then your assessor gives you the scenario assessor can you confirm that i have the right ppe on and i've performed my hand hygiene using the seven steps yes please okay. so i'll go to um the patient and i can see the baby's bomb is coming um i mommy hi amy my name is balaji your midwife i can see your baby's bum um but do not worry we'll deliver your baby but i'm gonna need some help so i'm going to call for assistance now so don't be agitated when you see people coming so i would i would run and pull the emergency buzzer this is an emergency breach birth can i get the assistance of the senior obstetrician the senior midwife Anesthetist, the pediatrician, the scribe, the other midwives. Then I'll go back. So, um, Amy, to deliver your baby, um, I'd like you to be at the I'll position Amy at the edge of the bed. I would ensure that the resuscitator is ready for the baby, and I'll also check the uh, fetal heart rate every five minutes. Are you sure? Continuous topographic monitoring. Um, then I would note the, the time of the delivery of the bomb bomb because the time of the delivery of the bomb bomb to the time of the delivery of the head should not be more than five minutes, and the time of the delivery of the of the umbilicus to the time of delivery of the 
edge should not be more than three minutes um i'll encourage amy to continue to per- amy i would like you to continue to perform your deep breathing exercises and push with contractions while we carry out the maneuvers so i can see your bomb coming now um i've noted the time of delivery of the bomb i would be using the hands off technique to deliver your baby but i will be standing in readiness for whenever the baby comes if the legs is not delivered spontaneously i'll be putting my hand amy i'll put my hand in your vagina now to deliver the legs the leg the first leg the right leg i'll try to search for the popliteal fossa and deliver the leg in a sweeping motion and if the right the other leg is not spontaneously delivered as well i'll do the same thing so find the popliteal fossa deliver the legs in a j-shaped manner and continue to be hands off i would be using the hands off technique so that tactile stimulation does not cause the hyperflexion of the head and the limbs i would continue to encourage amy and support her with her contractions and her deep breathing exercises since the legs has been delivered now i will check for the well-being of the baby the tone of the legs um and the color to rule out any fetal distress um as amy continues to push with heavy contraction i would look out for the scapula when i see the scapula i'll go on to perform the love set maneuver the love set maneuver i'll stabilize my hand on the hip the pelvis the bony parts and um, avoid the soft tissue and i would rotate the baby then i'll go back to hands off and let the baby be born through downward traction if the arms does not deliver spontaneously um, i'll go on to deliver the arm using my hand trying to find the cubital fossa and then i would deliver the arm in a sweep j-shaped manner if the other arm does not deliver spontaneously as well i'll go on to this do the same thing for the other arm um then i would continue to monitor the baby and encourage amy and support amy providing reassurance amy you are doing very well well done keep the good job on keep pushing with constructions and using your deep breathing exercises um at the site of the nape of the neck i'll go on to perform the marie cosmelivet's um maneuver and with this one i'm just going to, to put my the palm of my hand holding the baby's head avoiding the organs and i would put my other arm supporting the occiputs and i would deliver the baby in a j-shaped manner laterally towards the mother's abdomen i would um note the baby's abga well-being at that time and then i would um if the baby is well enough, if the baby does not have any concerns, I would delay the cord clamping and cut within one to five minutes. If the baby has concerns, I'll cut immediately and begin resuscitation. Um, I would ensure that there is a warm towel before putting the baby on the mom's mom's chest and initiate skin to skin immediately. Um, then I would go on to administer intramuscular oxytocin as part of the management of the stage of labor on the thigh so amy this is a um, oxytocin 10 international units it usually helps to facilitate the delivery of the placenta you're gonna feel a sharp scratch you're right for me to administer it yeah so i'm going you feel a sharp scratch on your thigh like that then I would look out for signs of um, placenta separation, which includes a gush of blood, the lengthening of the cord, and um, the uterus becoming round and firm. I would um, deliver the placenta by controlled cord traction. 
I would assess the um, placenta for completeness, completeness of the lobe and ensure that there aren't any missing parts and ensure that the membranes are intact. Um, then I would go on to rub off the uterus for contraction, expelling any clots. I'll assess the perineum for any um I'll assess the perineum for any lacerations and sutures. Say I'll perform the maternal observations and document it on news charts. Um I would estimate blood loss, monitor lochia, initiate skin to skin immediately, and then support mom to feed baby according to our choice. Um I would complete an incident form i will debrief mom and debrief the partner i will involve the hmdc i would estimate blood loss monitor look here i would um complete a, a breach presentation performer i would notes i would um do a referral to the pediatrician for an hip ultrasound to check the hip of the baby due to um due to the bridge presentation i would perform all the relevant documentation i'll make amy comfortable and um, i'll discard all my waste in the clinical waste bin and i would wash my hands according to the seven steps of um, and hygiene by WHO. I hope you find this video helpful. I hope it was able to answer some of the questions. See, so find me again in my next video. I remain your darling, Omar BJ. Remain in God and God bless you. Bye.